Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. How you doing today? Hope you're having a good day out there. Of course, happy Monday. How are you? Hey, uh, so here we go. We've got a new uh, bipartisan supported act that's coming out. If you haven't seen enough acts this year, then, uh, well, here comes another one. So you might want to get used to it. We've seen the SECURE Act, the CARES Act. We've got another stimulus coming after the election, most expect. And now we have something called the Securing a Strong Retirement Act of 2020. The, they put 2020 on there because they really think they're going to get this done this year, likely after the election and all that great stuff, of course. But um, here we go. Here's what's going on. There's some interesting changes here. So I want to cover these with you because they really they're going to affect your dough, whether it's today or when you retire. So uh, first thing is they're coming back for the RMDs. We just raised the RMD from 70 and a half to 72. Now they want to raise it to 75. You get it? They're trying to get you to keep your money in the stock market. They don't need the tax now. They'll need it in the future, but they need you to keep your money in the stock market. We can't have people selling off their stocks there. Uh, this applies to your 401k, your traditional IRA, things like that, where it's pre-tax dollars that when you reach a certain age, the government wants their tax. They're essentially saying you now can have to age 75 if this bill passes. They also want, this is kind of interesting. I, I kind of like this. They want to exempt you from an RMD, essentially make it voluntary. If your account balance is under $100,000 uh, in the last day of the year, by the last day of the year. So if you uh, are taking RMDs and you're getting later in life and you're maybe not spending as much and you're, you're like, Social Security's fine, I got enough money, um, in, then you wouldn't be required to take RMDs once you reach under $100,000. You could give it to charity or leave it for legacy sort of planning or whatever you want to do there. Now, this part would start 120 days after the bill is enacted. So in other words, it will likely not count for 2020. So don't get your hopes up, right? <laughs> so if your account balance is hovering around 100,000 this year, it's really gonna apply to next year. You still have to take your RMD this year, even if they pass the bill tomorrow. So keep that in mind. All right, also, I think this is pretty cool. Um, you know how in your 401k, your traditional IRA, when you hit age 50, the year that you turn 50, you are eligible for what's known as catch-up contributions. You can put an extra thousand in your IRA, an extra five, uh, 6,000 in your 401k. Well, what they wanna do is say, all right, keep that the same, but when you reach age 60, now there's gonna be another catch-up. Now you can go to 10,000 or 5,000 if it's in your uh, simple IRA, right? So basically they're saying over the age of 60, you're still working, you wanna contribute more, we're gonna let that go to 10,000 now. It'll be a separate catch-up contribution limit, which I think is pretty cool. I, I don't know, I, I kinda of like that one there. I, you tell me what you think below, uh, but that's that one. All right, also in the Securing a Strong Retirement Act of 2020, they want to increase the income limit for the savers credit, right? So uh, to get 50% of the credit, they're going to raise the income limit for, uh, to 40000 for individuals and 80000 if you're married filing jointly. And they're also raising the amount of the contribution there at the same time. To get 50% of the credit, it's now you have to contribute at least $3,000. Or if the bill passes, that's what they're trying to do there. All right, the other one, which is a review to something they've been trying to pass for a while is the automatic enrollment of you in your company's 401k. So right now you have a choice. You don't want to do it, you don't have to do it, right? They don't offer a match, you don't like it, well, whatever. Now what they want to do is say when someone is hired, if a 401k is offered, they automatically get put into the 401k. They tried to pass that in the SECURE Act and it didn't get in the final print there, but that's what you have there. I, I, I don't know about that one. I, I, I don't like when they tell you you have to do something like pay Social Security. Uh, but if it's, if it's going to help you save, all right, that's fine. It doesn't say that you have to contribute anything to it. It just says you're enrolled in it. So I don't know. The reason they're doing that is because now if you're an employer and you've been wanting to open a 401k plan for your employees, but you didn't like the cost, right? Let's say there's an upfront cost to do that, which I don't think there really is anymore, but some maybe if you have like 40 people or 45 people that work for you, all right, maybe there's a cost. Um, but anyways, they want to say, uh, previously, when you set that up, you could be reimbursed for 50% of the cost. They want to bump that up to 100%. So that's pretty cool there. You have to have less than 50 employees in order to get the 100% credit. That's what the bill says anyways. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, they also want to make it easier to gift money in your IRA to charity. So it's kind of already somewhat easy to do that, uh, but they want to make it even easier. There's a whole host of things if you want to read through the bill there. All right, here's the big one. This they tried to get passed in the SECURE Act or, uh, from before it didn't work. They, it didn't make it in the final print. But um, what they want to do is, you know how you have a 401k that has a match? Let's say it's 5%. 
you put in some of your income, they match up to 5% of your income. Well, now what they want to do is give you two paths. They want you to say, okay, if you put in 5% or whatever you put in, you can choose to have that money go to your 401k, or do you have student loans? If you have student loans, you can direct that money towards your student loans. Your income, your pre-tax income can go to your student loans. But by doing that or making that election, it does not disqualify you from the match. They want to force the company to still make the contribution. So if you take 5% of your income, let's do it this way. Let's say you take 2.5% of your income, pre-tax dollars, and you put those towards your student loans, and you take 2.5% and put it towards your 401k, essentially this bill is saying you still get the full 5% match. If you took 5% of your income and put it towards your student loans, pre-tax dollars, uh, and, it, that, and they went out the door towards your student loans, you would still get the 5% match. I don't know how I feel about that one. How, what do you guys think there? I, at first glance, you're like, that's pretty sweet. Okay, paying off student loans, but that doesn't solve the student loan crisis. That maybe helps people with student loans, but I don't know. I, that one's, let me know what you think below on that one, because I'm, I'm a little bit stuck on that one there, uh, whether that's good or not. But Nonetheless, that's in this bill, which by the way, this bill is widely bipartisan supported, meaning both sides agree for the most part. They may bicker on the things inside the plan, but they agree that this is going to be something in one fashion or another, just kind of like they did on the SECURE Act. Uh, sponsored by uh, Richard Neal, a Democrat out of Massachusetts, uh, and uh, Kevin Brady out of Texas. He's a Republican there. Those are the two co-sponsored uh, members of the bill, and uh, they've got a lot of support. So it looks like by the end of the year, we could be seeing a new act that we all have to adjust to. There is so much in this act, by the way. There's a whole lot more we can cover. If it becomes an act, of course, we'll do a class for our customers. Every Thursday, I do a class for our customers to go over all the you know interesting things going on. If this becomes an act, I've already read through it. I'll read through the final print and we'll see what we come up with. But um, yeah, let me know. What do you think? I like the RMDs at 75. I like the, the minimum balance there. If your account balance is under 100,000, you're not forced to take the RMD. That's pretty cool. Um, but I, I don't know about that employee student loan thing. I have a feeling that's going to be a little bit of a debated topic. Anyways, let me know what you think below. If it helped you in some way, of course, hit subscribe. That really helps us out in everything. You're supposed to hit the thumbs up and all that great stuff. Uh, but if you do that, that helps us. Otherwise, check us out at jazzwealth.com. Do appreciate you guys watching today. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you.